BTEC Applied Science Unit 3 Skills and this video is about planning and investigation. Now in the Unit 3 exam you will be asked to write down a plan. You'll be asked to plan an investigation and what you see in the box here will be on the paper. Your plan should include a hypothesis, selection and justification of equipment, techniques or standard procedures, health and safety, and methods of data collection and analysis, etc. This actual box will be on the paper, so get ready for it. Uh, practice writing plans. There'll be loads of marks for it. I think there's about eight or nine marks for this, so make sure you can write a good plan. Let's go through all the bits in it. So, first of all, a hypothesis. I've talked about hypotheses uh, in my last video it's an idea that you can test a prediction that you can test by doing an experiment if such and such then such and such if we increase the temperature then the rate of reaction will increase okay we're, we're saying what the independent variable is we're saying what the dependent variable is that's our hypothesis it might be a null hypothesis. This is when you say that there isn't a relationship. For example, the pH of the soil does not affect the rate of photosynthesis. That would be a, a null hypothesis. Equipment. Now, selection and justification of equipment. So, what equipment will you use and why will you use it? You have to justify your choice. I will measure the resistance using a multimeter. Why? Because the college has several multimeters and they're very accurate, they're very easy to use. There are other ways of measuring resistance, but they take a lot longer. If you've got a good multimeter, then just use it. I will measure the temperature using a thermometer that reads from 0 to 100 degrees centigrade with 0.5 degree divisions. Okay, this will be accurate enough to see a clear pattern in my results. So say what equipment you're going to use and justify it. Why? If there's a choice of equipment, say why you chose that one. Standard ways. There are standard ways of doing some experiments and they are standard because we know that they're going to produce reliable and accurate results. For example, I'll do my titration using a pipette and a pH meter. Uh, I will keep using a water bath. Uh, I will measure the amount of gas produced every 30 seconds using a gas syringe. You know, these are standard techniques, standard ways of doing it. And because they are reliable and they are accurate, this is what scientists use. You should identify any hazards. We talked about the risk analysis in the last video. Say what the risk is, say what you'll do if it happens, say how you'll minimise the risk, and you only need to do it for one hazard. You don't need to identify loads and loads, okay? Just do it for one hazard. Do it for two to be careful, but you actually only need one. The most obvious one would be the best one. Uh, for example, acids are corrosive and must be handled with care. Beakers of acid should be in the middle of the table and clearly labelled. If acid touches the skin, you should rinse under a tap immediately and inform the teacher or a technician. A method. Now, a, a good method is like a recipe. And I think it's a good idea to do bullet points. It's a, a very good way of writing out a method. It's nice and clear. It's easy to read. It's easy for you to check to make sure that everything's in there. Say what your independent and de dependent variables are. Say what your controlled variables are. Say what range of measurements you will take and how many. Uh, say how you will take the measurements, what equipment you'll use. And say if you're going to take repeats or not. Very important. Say I will do everything twice to take repeat readings so I can take an average. Uh, a diagram of your setup usually helps. A label diagram is better than a list of equipment, really. Here's an example of a, a method. I will drop the ball from seven different heights between 100 centimetres and 30 centimetres 
10 centimeters apart. So I've said what the range is, I've said what the interval is, I've said how many readings I'm gonna take. Uh, I will use a meter ruler held in a clamp to measure these heights. I will make sure the meter ruler is vertical using a set square. I will do each height twice. I will measure the height that the ball bounces using the same meter ruler. My independent variable is the drop height. Dependent variable is the bounce height. Control variable is the type of ball, the surface. I'll use the same ball and bounce it on the same flat surface. I will try to observe the bouncing ball from the same height to avoid parallax error. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Okay, so that's an example of a method which has everything I said should be in it. Uh, analysis, how, what are you going to do with your data? I suggest you draw a little table to show how you will collect the data. You know, temperature in degrees centigrade, time one in seconds, time two in seconds, and the mean time in seconds. Uh, I will calculate the rate of reaction by dividing the volume of gas produced by the time. Say what you're going to do with your data. How are you going to analyze your results? I will calculate the average time. I will plot a line graph of the mean time against temperature. Here's one for you to have a go at. Uh, if you're in my class, I will give you this for homework. Uh, catalase is an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Catalase occurs naturally in potato. Your task is to write a plan for an experiment to investigate the relationship between the concentration of the substrate and the rate of reaction. 